Welcome to the Wata channel. In today's video, we are going to learn about the process of histology. Histology involves microscopic examination of tissue sections to study their structure and functions. It is very important in the study of the reproductive health of fishes, including sex verification, identifying the developmental stages, documenting intersex or the parasites and other abnormalities. Observation of consecutive changes during gonadal development is important as it gives an estimate of physiological sexual maturity by giving a detailed visualization of the reproductive cells. These features describe reproductive dynamics, which includes the spawning seasons and cycles, and also the effects of various environmental stressors on the overall reproductive health, thereby giving ideas on how to manage adaptations on preservation and commercial exploitation of fish populations. Join me as I walk you through the histology procedures and techniques. First, we must ensure that our samples are fresh. This way, we can produce high-quality results from well-prepared slides. The next step is fixation. Fresh extracted gonads are transferred to a fixative. A fixative preserves the morphological structure and chemical constituents of tissues and cells, making them capable of withstanding further preparatory steps unchanged. One of the most used fixative and the one we will be using for this project is Bowen's Solution, an aqueous fixative. Next is dehydration. But before that, samples taken out of the fixative are stored in 70% ethanol. After that, you proceed with a graded series of alcohols to remove the fixative as well as the water in the tissues. After that, we need to remove the dehydrating agent from the tissue samples through a clearing service before finally impregnating them in paraffin. The dehydrating fluid is replaced by the clearing agent that is totally miscible with both the dehydrating fluid and the embedding medium. For this, we use toluene in the following order. As you can see, tissues are first impregnated in soft paraffin which will completely remove the clearing agent and fill all the tissue cavities. Next is embedding in hard paraffin, wherein the tissues are placed in an arranged position to a mold. Hard paraffin provides firmer consistency and an external support during cutting and sectioning. The embedding is then allowed to cool and solidify. It is also important to note in embedding the melting points of both the soft and hard paraffin for this may affect the penetration and the quality of the embedded tissue. Soft paraffin melts at 46 to 48 degrees Celsius while hard paraffin starts to melt at 56 to 58 degrees. Solid sample blocks such as this are then sectioned using a microtome set at about 5 microns per cut to form ribbons or a series of cuts. In this activity, patience is needed in positioning the sample for sectioning. This is essential for getting good cuts and a better ribbon to be placed in glass slides. The rhythm is also important so that cuts will be uniform all throughout. Consistent sharpness and quality of cut should also be observed by stropping. The cutting edge of the knife is polished and irregularities are removed using a brush. Ribbons produced are then mounted in glass slides with albumin as an adhesive. Then, a drop of distilled water is used to let the ribbon expand and have a good fit in the slide. These slides are then laid in a hot plate set at 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, letting the water from the slide evaporate. And then, we rehydrate the samples. This process starts with clearing agents, making the tissues transparent, then followed by a series of alcohols in decreasing concentrations. Then, the slides are put into a flow-through using tap water to allow chemical traces and impurities in the slides to flow off. Finally, the slides are dipped in distilled water. Next step will be staining. Histology stains are selected according to the type of tissues examined. This is done to distinguish different biological structures more easily and accurately. Hematoxylin and eosin are some of the most used biological stains, which will also be used for our exercise.
After staining, the samples undergo dehydration to remove excess water. Here, we use an increasing concentration of alcohols. This will be followed by clearing agents that will remove the alcohols and make the tissues transparent. After finally removing excess water from the slides, they will be mounted with cover slip. Here, we use U-Kit as an adhesive. Extreme care and patience are also needed in this stage as bubbles may appear on the tissues when the cover slip is fixed. This will affect the appearance of the tissues under the microscope. Usually, the back tip of a pencil is used to position the cover slip in a way that bubbles are given way to escape and make a solid adhesion between the slide and the cover slip. After two days, the slides are ready. Now, let us take a look at them under a compound microscope. We usually start at low magnifications, then we shift to high magnifications where you can start looking for germ cells and reproductive structures and even take a picture of them. We study these pictures to know their sexual maturity based on existing literatures. These pictures will show us the current stage of maturity of the samples. Data such as this is extremely useful in generating a picture of the population that we are currently extracting from our fishing grounds. This way, we can implement management intervention that is based on facts provided by science. And that's it for today's episode on histology. There is always something new to be learned or things that can really drive your curiosity and make you ask more questions about the world around you. Let's learn together online here at the Wata channel. If you have questions or just want to share something about the topic, you may comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!